Cuba. Cuba. Yes. We would like to welcome everyone tonight to this afternoon slash evenings Workers World Party Cuba trip report back where myself and other comrades travel to revolutionary Cuba to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Che Guevara's martyrdom. My name is Christian, and I'll be chairing the report back tonight. <laughs> yeah. And thank you for adjusting with the date changes, as we wanted to make sure everyone who was involved with this trip was able to attend today. And before we get started, I do want to make one announcement that everyone is aware that Richard is out. Yeah. For those who are unaware, Richard was a hero on Thursday night. There was a cop who was harassing a sleeping person on a subway, and Richard took heroic objection to that, stood up for him, and he is a hero. Yes, ride out and ride to work to help his comrades. And so comrades, we also want to take note that later this month on the 25th of November marks the first, first year anniversary of the death of Fidel Castro. And we join with the leadership of the Cuban Revolution, the Cuban masses, and millions around the world who mourn his loss. Both like Che, Fidel lives on. His revolutionary optimism and steadfast opposition to U.S. imperialism will live on for eternity. Mm -hmm. okay. So we will begin with a short video, and then I will give the first talk, giving an overview of what we did while in Cuba. Then we will hear from Nate on Cuba's response to Hurricane Irma, followed by Nick, talking about the panel, about the youth, women, and mass organizations. And then Rafael will speak on healthcare in Cuba. And then we'll have Ariella speak on the atmosphere of Cuba from a sociological perspective. And then finally, we will end with a talk from Bill Sachs from his trip on the recent Vince Ramos Brigade. So we have, yeah. So we have a lot of great talks, a lot of great speakers. We're going to have a fun night tonight. So we will first begin with a short video that's put together that we can watch now. If you just hit the lights for a second. Por primera vez, la Brigada de Solidaridad por los Caminos del Che llega a Pinar del Río. Representantes de movimientos sociales e integrantes de grupos de amistad con Cuba desandan la ruta del guerrillero heroico en la serranía Vuelta Bajera. Entre el 22 de octubre y el 23 de noviembre de 1960, la Cueva de los Portales fue escenario de las principales acciones estratégicas del ejército occidental al mando del comandante Ernesto Che Guevara. En el sitio donde radicó su comandancia, los brigadistas condenaron el recrudecimiento del bloqueo contra la isla y resaltaron el legado internacionalista del Che a 50 años de su desaparición física. I want to thank uh, humbly thank the Cuban people uh, for giving us. Quiero agradecerle al pueblo cubano a la oportunidad nosotros los estadounidenses venir aquí y a compartir con ustedes y aprender de la lucha de Che que también su ejemplo de solidaridad podemos llevar a los Estados Unidos. Yo quise venir a Cuba a ver cómo ustedes se liberaron para que porque me dan esperanza para Puerto Rico que se, que algún día. Se pueda liberar también. Admiramos y amamos al Che. Estoy muy feliz de estar aquí en Cuba. Me gusta mucho lo que he visto aquí en términos de revolución. Conformada por más de 200 activistas de 21 países, la brigada visitará sitios históricos de La Habana, Santi Espíritus y Villa Clara, entre los que destacan el complejo monumentario Camilo Cienfuegos, el mausoleo del Frente Las Villas y el Museo a la Acción contra el Tren Blindado. Además, realizarán jornadas de trabajo voluntario en las provincias que se recuperan tras el paso del huracán Irma. Desde Pinar del Río, Daimi Díaz Breijo, Sistema Informativo de la Televisión Cubana.
Right. Okay. We're just getting ready to start the live stream. Again, everyone here and those at home watching on the live stream, we'd like to welcome everyone again to this afternoon's Workers' World Party Cuba Trip Report Back, and where we, myself and other comrades, traveled to Revolution Cuba to commemorate the 50th anniversary of Che Guevara's martyrdom. I will begin presenting an overview of what we did while we were in Cuba. And I also have a slideshow I'll be showing along with that. In the corner. Yeah, that's right. So, I have it titled Cuba. 14 Days of Revolutionary Spirit in Revolutionary Cuba. So, so it began with a departure and an arrival. We la spent the day on the camp as the rest of the comrades ended up coming in and meeting other delegates from around the, from other countries. There were about 219 people total, including from other countries for the delegation, including 21 delegations, and from the U.S., there was about 68 people who came. And we arrived at the ECAP camp, which, for those who are unaware, that is the um, Cuban Institute for Friendship with the People. On the second day, we had our early morning routine. We um, woke up on the days by a rooster call. Which, yes, it wasn't an actual rooster, it was an um, audio recording of a rooster that was played on the speakers for all of us to hear and wake up to. Yeah. And it was, it varied from about five to six. There were multiple recordings that the rooster would come in on. Mm -hmm. And Cheryl so loved it that she used it for her alarm clock. <laughs> 
And yeah, so sometimes we have to wake up around either five or six. And on this day, we did a march for a floral gift to remember Che. All the brigadistas gathered at the central plaza within the camp with banners, such as the one that was made in Baltimore. And other countries brought out their flags. And the director of the camp, a political coordinator, and a student spoke there as we laid a wreath down to remember Che. And that's what's in the bottom corner. And then, on the next day, we visited the cave of Portales in the province of Pinar del Rio. This is where the headquarters was in a large cave that served as a communication center, operations center, kitchen, and office for Che and his group during the time of the missile crisis. See some other photos here of the dormitory and communication center. And then also that night from Baltimore, we had a comrade named Busma who celebrated her 19th birthday in Cuba. And while we were at the caves, we also had a, we were granted a tour of the cave with a detailed explanation of the context that took place. And then on the bus ride back, our um, Cuban coordinator informed us of the update on the 15 people who were expelled from the Cuban embassy in the U.S. And on that bus ride, we decided that the U.S. delegation was going to write a statement denouncing that those expulsions, which we worked on that night to get ready to be put out. The next day, we began our first day of voluntary work at the camp. And we worked alongside the workers, and we followed their lead to do the best we could to help them out and use our numbers to try and make up for what we didn't have in specific skills. <laughs> we did work such as people worked in the kitchens, cleaning, clearing the fields, working in gardens, or cleaning the grounds. This we have some comrades who had some machetes who were clearing the grass to clear the field as well as clearing out debris that was laid out on this field so that the crops could be seen. Yes. And then we visited, and this is then the same day, because we did a lot, we did multiple things on a lot of days. Since we were only there for about two weeks, it felt like we were there for about like three months. So it was like a lot. So even in this presentation, I'm not able to cover everything we did. So I'm just trying to give an overview. This is when we visited the Moro Cambania complex. It's a main fort, and we had a guided tour. This is where Che's headquarters was at the Moro fort that protected the Havana Harbor. Inside was also a small museum for Che, as well as his office. And then afterwards, we were dropped off in front of the Museum of Revolution and we're given free time to explore Havana. These are some planes that are positioned outside of the museum. Later that night, we had dinner at the Casa de Amistad, the ECAP House of Friendship in Havana. And there afterwards, we had a whole group of performers who came out and performed songs that were specific to different countries that are represented in the brigade. The woman up top, from sang a song from Argentina. She sang, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. From the US, there was an Afro-Cuban who sang in Spanish, um, Old Man River. And then there was a woman who then sang, I Will Always Love You, from Whitney Houston. <laughs> and when the woman from, who sang the Argentina song, she performed, there was a man who came up with like a bouquet of roses to give to her during the performance. And I was like, wow, that was amazing. How did you know to do that and where do you have roses? So during the performance of the Whitney song, that same man like nudged me. And I thought he was like trying to get past me. But then he gave me also like a bouquet of roses. And he was like, wait, wait, wait. And she hit like one of the high notes and he was like, now go. <laughs> so I was able to go up on stage to give her a bouquet of roses.
And then the next day, we left where we were at the camp to travel to the Vila Clara province. To, um, we arrived at the Revolution Square in Santa Clara. We were given a presentations on the importance of Camilo, and we were able to visit um, Che's mausoleum, the interment where the other combatants who died in Bolivia were kept, which that, to be very respectful, they did not allow any cameras or video footage to be taken there. And then, sorry, it's a little harder without the light. Sorry. Yeah. Let me share around it. Yes. And then afterwards, we visited the Museum of Action against the armored train, which was the um, travel to railway car in Santa Clara. And we were given a presentation on the history around the railway car and the importance of the battle. That it was the used to actually derail the train right there. And here was the museum set up where they had the trains laid around. And then we were able to travel to downtown Sancti Spiritus where we were staying for a welcome party where we were greeted by the director of the city, by the ECAP director from the province. Let me see. That's what this one was. This was where we had um, some students came out. We were able to perform on the sax and we're playing on the guitar. And this really exemplified, because a lot of places we went, we were greeted by a lot of the youth and students who would be like performing and really showcase the way Cuba embraces like the arts for their youth and really show like their welcome. And the, it was amazing to see how like, and thrilled and excited the youth were about supporting the revolution. Yes. And then the next day, we visited the monument complex of Camilo Cienfuegos. We visited the famous statue museum where there was a guided tour. And we had the opportunity to talk with several combatants about their experience. And you see here on the upper corner, it was where he has the grave is kept, but there's no body there because it was in a plane crash, so they never able to recover his body. And then in the bottom corner, that's where they have an eternal plane for him. And then afterwards, we had a panel at the University of Sancti Spiritus with the Provincial Civil Defense, which we'll be hearing about a little later. And then after that, we visited the CDR, which is the Committees for the Defense of the Revolution, which is a network of neighborhood communities across Cuba supporting the revolution. And this was amazing. It was like a giant block party. Like at first, I thought it was going to be like a very fancy, formal event, but we got there. They asked for some like Q&A. Some people were asking questions that were a little long. Then one person got up and was like, we need to start partying. <laughs> this was a Cuban. It was, it was like, no, for like the event, it was amazing. We had like, there was dancing in the streets. It even started raining and they were still dancing and there was beef stew. And it was an amazing celebration. And then again, the next day, we had volunteer work, and this time it was in regards to hurricane relief. So when we were there, this was the area that was hit harder by the hurricane. So there was damages to the crops. And so we were able to go to an organic farm. We were able to help out. And we did weeding along this whole field. And in the corner was the worker there who was guiding us and showing us what to do, giving us his gratitude after we were done. And then on October 8th was when we had the commemoration. And this was when like a moment that really hit me when they handed out the official invitations to the event. And I see right here, and that was the cover of the invitation. And then right here, we have the speaker right here you see, it was the vice president, the first vice president of Cuba, Miguel Diaz Canal. And Raul was there, but he decided not to speak because he wanted younger people involved in the revolution to take more leadership. And so, but he was also led a group going up to lay flowers at the base of the statue, which is an amazing, huge statue. This was a huge space. It was completely filled. And even then behind us, 
there was like a fence and then filled behind that with people who were nearby from the community who all wanted to come to be a part of this event. And then I even have a very quick video here, just hit play, of one of the performances that took place during the event. That was an amazing part because you see also that was a time where like everyone got on their feet and it was such a like you could feel it from the crowd. It was amazing. Let's click onto the screen so thank you. And then the next day we visited we traveled to El Pedero, the municipal the municipality of Fomento, went to the cemetery of martyrs of Calamate where we met with combatants at Fomento. And we were presented again, like I said, with the youth, with school children. And these were, stu these were children who were inducted into the Pioneers organization on that day. And then afterwards, we had a reef ceremony. And we were able to speak with combatants, such as men on the left. And what was amazing was there was one other combatant that I went up to and speaking in Spanish, I wanted to like congratulate him and thank him for his like dedication and sacrifice. And he told me, no, he doesn't accept the word gracias, that what he did was his duty and responsibility, and it was what he had to do. Mm -hmm. And then that night, we had the farewell, because we were leaving Sancti Spiritus that night to head back to the camp. And we went to the Casa de Gallo Babera. Make sure I'm spelling it right. Where we had a culture presentation from some of the brigadistas, such as the man here from Argentina who played these amazing songs on guitar about the social struggle in Latin America. Which again, I've, I would love to show a lot more videos, but I don't have the time to do that. And then we had a panel on the mass organizations from youth and women's organizations, which we'll be hearing about in a little later. And this was on our last day of voluntary work at the camp. We did three days total. And as you see in the center, we have the worker who was there, who once we, once we finished, actually read us a poem he wrote about Che that he wrote at three in the morning the night before. Who then, the next day, once we actually left, read another poem for the whole group. And this was when we had just finished clearing um, weeds around um, yucca plants, or yucca trees. And then once we were done, we got some information on the voluntary work that we had been doing. And for the three days we had there, this is not including the work we did in the hurricane relief, we had contributed about over 2,580 hours of voluntary work in those days to help support the workers and show solidarity. <laughs> and then that was followed by a presentation by a representative of the Organization of Solidarity with the people of Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And then what was amazing was on October 13th, we had the um, final declaration of the brigade that we had written, spoken, that included the US's delegation statement on the expulsion of the 15 diplomats. And then that night was International Night, where all the groups from all the different countries did cultural performances, which were amazing, also presented food, and then for the U.S. delegation, we were able to close it out by doing the Asada chant. 
have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to fight for our freedom. It is our duty to win. We must love each other and support each other. We must love each other and support each other. We have nothing to lose but our chains. We have nothing to lose but our chains. Viva Asada. Viva Asada. Viva Che. Viva Che. Viva Fidel. Viva Fidel. Viva Cuba. Viva Cuba. Thank you. And the woman who was doing that chant was the comrade who I spoke of earlier who had just turned 19 when we had arrived that night, or when we first arrived. It was amazing. We had all comrades of color on stage surrounding her and supporting her. And then, sorry, we had departed and arrived back in the U.S. Thanks to visit coming out there, we came out with a lot of comrades who had come to support us on our way back with chants of "Long live the Cuban Revolution!" And this is when we took this picture, returning to bring back all our amazing stories, to keep the spirit of the Cuban Revolution alive, and to build it here in the U.S. Thank you. Thank you. Now, yes. yes. And like I said, that was only like a brief overview of all the amazing things we did while we were in Cuba. So if you want to see even more photos, more videos, just ask. <laughs> and so next, we're going to hear from Nate on Cuba's response to Hurricane Irma.